your local view on WYCU LDTV 26, serving Charlestown, New Hampshire, the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region, and Central Vermont. Coming up tonight on YCU, a couple pleads not guilty to drug trafficking charges after being pulled over in Springfield with drugs and guns. Vermont Governor Peter Shumlin wants to invest $17 million into early childhood education to help kids get a head start. And meet the Lake Sunapee Chamber of Commerce Citizen of the Year, Ella Casey. With more news, sports, and weather, stay tuned. It's time for YCU, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region and central Vermont. News, sports, weather, public affairs, and all that's happening in our area. The news on YCU, your local view. Welcome to our Tuesday edition of YCU. I'm David Carmichael. An Andover couple faces up to 30 years behind bars on drug trafficking charges. Please say 49-year-old Gina Ruperti and her husband, 54-year-old Ronald Reddick, were taking advantage of a void in the Springfield area created by several recent drug arrests of large-scale drug dealers. Police also found three loaded handguns in the car during the traffic stop. Both pled innocent to cocaine and heroin-related charges in court yesterday. The travel portion of I-91 southbound was closed for six hours yesterday after a single tractor-trailer truck rolled over near mile marker 48 in Weathersfield, Vermont, just before 10.30 a.m. Police say that the driver, Benjamin Hayes of Claremont, was driving south on I-91 when he went into a coughing fit. Although Hayes attempted to pull over in the breakdown lane, he traveled off the road and the Freightliner tractor trailer went down an embankment before rolling on its side. No injuries were reported. The Springfield Fire Department, Escutney Fire Department, Golden Cross and Reed Towing all responded to the scene. Police in Keene say vandals damaged or destroyed about 30 mailboxes in different areas of the city over the weekend. Three areas were the primary targets. Mailboxes were hit on Arch Street, Darling Road, and Chapman Road. The vandalism took place from Friday night into Saturday morning and from Saturday night into Sunday morning. The Springfield School Board unanimously selected Zach McLaughlin to serve as the next superintendent for the district. The 37-year-old McLaughlin was tapped as Springfield's next superintendent last night after the school board met with the top two candidates for more than three hours in an executive session last week. A humbled and excited McLaughlin was offered the position over the current Union Street School principal, Martha Potter, who congratulated the newest head of Springfield's district. Vermont Governor Peter Shumlin wants to invest $17 million into early childhood education. In addition to giving kids a strong educational start, Governor Shulman says his proposal will fix the broken system by helping lower income parents be able to afford quality child care so that they can work. To give you an example, right now a family of three spends $850 a month on daycare, but if the legislation adopts the governor's proposal and if that family has an income under the poverty level, the daycare cost would be cut by $350 a month. Governor Maggie Hassan selected a longtime Republican staffer to head her administration's economic development efforts, Jeffrey Rose of Goffstown. Currently, Rose serves as a director of public affairs for BAE's electronic systems sector. Hassan will formally nominate Rose for confirmation to the state's executive council on Wednesday. If confirmed, he would be serving as commissioner of the Department of Resources and Economic Development. After the break, we'll learn about the Bugby Senior Center in White River. The YCU News continues in a moment. 